the, this problem of the presence of evil in the world. We don't have to explain evil in the world by somehow creating a theology that accounts for it. Simply there is no moral evil. It accounts for the evil in baboons and parasites, not among yeah, people. Yeah, but there still is human suffering. I mean, there's oh, the the human theodicy problems the out the there. The <laughs> one <laughs> thing that <laughs> theodicy <laughs> did well is explain, yeah. at least in certain Christian traditions, explain human suffering and human sin. Because you yeah, have, I mean, the well, the, you know. The fundamentalists have got a easy well, explanation. It it's all, it's God gets, gets well, off the hook. It's Adam no, and Eve's fault. I think most, more general explanation in, in Christianity, certainly in the Catholic tradition, but also in others, in some of the main mainstream churches, is that, you know, God could have created robots rather than humans. Mm -hmm. But they would not be very interesting beings. It's much better to have humans that we have freedom. Now, having free will has as a consequence that ha we can do good or we can do evil. Now, when do we go do good, we earn, you know, our eternal reward, as it were, that way. That's, that's, the, that's the doctrine. If, do, if do, if we do evil, we'll be punished. Now, if we, God would have created robots, there would not be human evil. No, you, there would there be, be moral <laughs> evils. <laughs> it would not exist, but, but that would not be, first of all, an interesting world. Second, it certainly... Uh, it will be no real humans. The same with the, with the rest of the animal uh, you know, uh, world and, in fact, all of life. God would have created a world that did not evolve, fix. Mm -hmm. But that will not be a very interesting world. Uh, the world in which we live that evolves where new species appear, new kinds of organisms, new relationships, new ways of life. I mean, the, the, the evolution of life, as I, I was saying earlier, can be a great source of inspiration for religion, for mm -hmm. a religious view of the world. It's, we have yeah, to keep them apart. It creates problems, but though, it, cre it creates problems, <laughs> but it can be a re source of religious inspiration. Uh, so God is responsible for the evil in the world that, uh, that comes from evolution? No, because those, that evil is no longer evil because they are not moral subjects. Mm -hmm. God could have created a world that didn't evolve? Yes, but that would not have been a very interesting world. I'm happy that we have free will and that the world evolves. It's much more interesting. You know, I, I used to say that <laughs> I didn't go into science because I never did well in the courses in which there was only one right answer. <laughs> and now I suspect I just didn't study it long enough. Well, but we're not talking science here. No, no I understand that. Let's say with a parenthetic <laughs> note, did you, did you notice the, the interesting dialogue that started emerging here? The problem of evil in the world, you know, with a loving God. Where is this loving God? Now, that's a challenging and great question. And that's one of the questions we have to wrestle with. I'll, I'll make actually, if I can just, because yeah. this is something that, that I was thinking of when Francisco was talking too. If you're going to be a religious person, your religious views have to take into consideration the real world. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you, if you're going to have a, if you're, I'm, I'm not a believer, but you know, I, I hang out with a lot of theologians. <laughs> and you know, they will tell me that if you're going to have a real meaningful theology, it has to accord with what we know of the natural world. So obviously, science has to inform religion. Now, where we run into problem is with something like creation science, and I would argue also intelligent design, which is where people are saying, well, the theology has to inform the science. The theology has to tell science how the real world is. That does, that's not the way science works. You know, we, we, we muddle along best we can trying to explain things using natural causes, not supernatural causes, mm -hmm. not God, because it happens to be a very good way to find out and a very reliable way and, and a way that ends up with providing very good explanations of the natural world. But theology has to consider uh, science, and not all theological views are uh, concordant with what we know of science. What have we learned from this challenge. What have you learned specifically, Dr. Yeah, Scott? The challenge of science. Creationism uh, and, and intelligent design. Have you learned anything well, from the critics? I have learned some uh, good things, but mostly, um, I don't know how to put it. Uh, my, my, what I have learned from this dialogue is a very sad situation, the one that we are confronting in the United States, because we are creating a problem, a conflict, where there is no need for conflict, where there should be, if anything, collaboration and mutual reinforcement. Um, and the problem exists because we have very poor scientific education and we have very poor religious education. 
because even the proponents of intelligent design would benefit of taking a few courses in theology. You know, they, they will learn things that they don't seem to, to know. Um, so what we need, how to deal with, to solve the problem, uh, more education, and more education in the schools, but also once people leave the schools, uh, you know, the media, the press, the radio, television, should play a role in continuing education and, and certainly with respect to science, that does not happen in this country. It does not happen really in any country, seriously. But it does not happen in this country. And we are the leading country in the world with matters of science and technology. You know, how many pages you see dedicated to science every day in the main newspapers? Nothing. I mean, you That's have six or eight pages dedicated to sports. You have probably a quarter page or half a page to the horoscope. But science does not get anything. I mean, you have some exceptions. You know, the LA Times has, I mean, the, the New York Times has on Tuesdays, you know, four science or five Tuesday, pages yeah. of Science Tuesday. But this is the exception. It's very, in occasion, all newspapers publish a, an article about some newly discovered thing or whatever. Don't forget but you celebrities. Need, you need, yeah, <laughs> celebrities too. You need continuous education. And, and it's, it would be wonderful if the media would pay more attention to the need to educate the public with respect to science. Production of this program was made possible by the John Templeton Foundation and is a co-production of The Ohio State University, COSI, and WOSU Public Media.